The first round of the NAIA Football Championship Series for 2022 is in the books, and the quarterfinal matchups have been released. Let's take a look at those matchups now here on Midwest Sportsnet. They should be four very great games awaiting us on Saturday. Morningside, the number one team in the country and the number one seed in this year's playoffs, hosting the number 12 seed, Kaiser, as the Seahawks will travel to Sioux City, Iowa. The real question here for Morningside is, will Joe Dolinchek be available? Cale Bird started for the Mustangs on Saturday in the win over Arizona Christian. Lennox Brown came in as well, had a few solid runs and a touchdown run. But Dolinchek is key to this offense, and he's been able to find those great receivers in Norton and Johnson all season long. Two receivers, by the way, that are in the top five in the country in receiving yards and are at the top of the touchdown list in AI, both with 16 touchdowns apiece. Dolinchek needs to be there. Ryan Cole filled in admirably. Now, Ryan Cole had a great year so far, but he was even bigger in the win for Morningside in the first round. He had 44 carries, which tied a program record for rushing attempts. 208 yards, had two touchdown carries as well. He was big, but it's going to be tough to ask him to shoulder the road for the entirety of the playoffs. Will Dolinchek be back? Kaiser, on the other hand, has Shea Spencer at the helm. He's been looking fantastic. Marquise Burgess was in for only three carries in Kaiser's victory, Jaden Meisinger was a workhorse. 28 carries, 166 yards in the win for Kaiser. They also have a solid defense. Wendell Valord leading the way there for the Seahawks here. 8-3 and three on the season, but 8-0 and oh against NAIA opponents. And it has been a fantastic season for Kaiser. The three losses, I know if you look at it just on paper, you say, wow, they have three losses. Don't read anything into that at all this is a strong strong seahawks team making its fourth appearance for a very young program in the naia playoffs the next matchup features the number two team in the country grandview the vikings led by johnny sullivan he has nearly 2800 yards passing 31 touchdown passes that's good enough for third in the NAI, and he does more than just manage this team he leads this team very well ali scott nearing the 1000 mark in rushing yards this year, Grandview putting up 40.1 points per game, sixth in the NAI, but also it's their defense that's big as they are giving up only 9.0 points per game. That is second in the NAIA, led by Nate Yule, 60 tackles, seven tackles for loss. Grandview is hosting Lindsey Wilson as the Blue Raiders escape in their victory, come away with a 23 22 victory on Saturday. Ethan Cash, 11 for 22, 128 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions on Saturday versus Reinhardt. He's been leading the way, getting it done for the Blue Raiders. Kobe Belcher, 33 carries. It was a running day all day on Saturday. So cold outside throughout the country. Belcher with 33 carries, 137 yards on the ground and a touchdown run. That was key for the Blue Raiders advancing. They survive and advance a defense for Lindsey Wilson, led by Luke Bowman. And he had nine tackles on Saturday and a 95-yard pick six as well. He's had a solid season. It's Lindsey Wilson on the road at Grandview. The number three team in the country is still going in the playoffs. Northwestern is the Red Raiders, 10-1, and one, are led by Jalen Gramstead. Gramstead has played in all 11 games for the Red Raiders this season, but he really came along for, for Blake Fryer, uh, about midway through, I want to say game five, game six. And since that time, he has been absolutely fantastic. He is second in the NAI in rushing touchdowns, and that's basically in just eight games. He accounted for five touchdowns, two passing, three running on Saturday. And uh, Gramstead, more than 2,500 yards in total offense on the season. Now, Connor McQuillan also doing a great job running the ball for the Red Raiders. And Blake Anderson, Michael Story, great receivers. For Gramstead to find. Cade Mosier is back in the last four games, and he was big on Saturday as well. Northwestern, and this could be a big matchup because they're third in the NAIA in total offense, in total points scored, going against a Marion team coming in at 9-1 and one that leads the NAI, giving up only 7.8 points per game. So something has to give in this one. The Knights have Zach Bundelow at the helm. Bundelow to Ben Stevens. Four touchdowns on Saturday between the two. They've been doing this all season long. Stevens is fourth in the NAIA in receiving yards, and I think both of them should be looked at strongly 
for postseason honors. The quarterback, the receiver, bundle to Steven. That's the way it's been this year. I would be shocked to, to see anything different than that as uh, Marion will be traveling to Orange City to take on Northwestern on Saturday. That defense, by the way, 7.8 points per game. Oh, and, and don't forget, they have an offense too. 41 points per game, fifth in the NAI. But strong defense led by Logan Blake. He had a pick six on Saturday. He's had 53 tackles this year, 12 and a half tackles for loss, four sacks, a couple of interceptions, and again, like the one on Saturday. So Marion at Northwestern. And then the final of our four matchups for next Saturday is Benedictine at Indiana Wesleyan, each with one loss and one loss, by the way, that could have been a win as well. Benedictine on the road traveling to Indiana Wesleyan to Marion, Indiana for this game. First time since 2018 that Benedictine's been in the playoffs. By the way, they made a run to the national championship game that year. Garrett Kettle is fantastic, and he's a dual threat. 30 fast passing touchdowns, 10 rushing touchdowns this year. Another big game on Saturday, 11 for 19, 225 yards passing on a cold day in Kansas. Three touchdowns, no picks. He also had 10 carries and a touchdown as well. It's what his season has looked like all year long. Rayshon Mills also in for 11 touchdowns for the offense too. A defense, Zach Gill, Tyler Wilson, a defense that has been strong for Benedictine and not to be overlooked. And by the way, almost overlooked a couple of the offensive players there. How about Jacob Gathright? 1,122 yards receiving eight touchdowns this year for the Ravens. And Jayshon Todd, all-purpose 1,249 yards the Ravens come in 11 and 1, the one loss to Grandview, and that was in the final seconds on a field goal. Indiana Wesleyan, they were our dark horse team here at Midwest Sports Net. And uh, you know what? They proved themselves out. Third in the preseason poll in their conference. They go 10 and 1, and they are making their first real appearance in the NAI playoffs. Let's not count last year. First real appearance, they get their first postseason win uh, on Saturday, taking out Avila. Indiana Wesleyan, led by Xavier Stokes, uh, one of the players we thought would be strong all season. He has been. 2,012 yards passing, 24 touchdowns to just two interceptions for Stokes this year. He's had a fantastic year. Dedarian Williams backs him up as well. He had 33 carries. He was a workhorse also on Saturday for 173 yards and a touchdown, a record-setting touchdown for him, the program, on Saturday a big year for Indiana Wesleyan. Can they keep it up? These are some huge matchups, and it should be a lot of fun to watch. So thanks for watching this as we've broken down the quarterfinal matchups here for the NAI Football Championship Series for 2022. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll have, of course, more content here on Midwest Sportsnet. And please do take the time, like the video, subscribe to the channel, 